not only don't we pay teachers what they deserve to be paid, in other countries that have better test scores than ours, you hear about that all the time, actually teachers get paid much more on an even standard with professionals who are engineers and in other walks of life. We have to face the fact that we have a lot of people who come out of school burdened with student loans and decide they can't go into teaching, so we lose a lot of good young people. So there's a lot we need to do, and it's not just about, you know, resources for the schools themselves. It is about how we have a better system for making sure every school is equipped. You know, when I walk into a school, I always say to the teachers, what's it like to teach here? And you kind of can tell what the school is like by the response. You know, sometimes I walk in and I say, what's it like to teach here? And I remember being in one Westchester school and the teacher said, it's like Camelot. And I walk into other places and I say, what's it like to teach here? And they go, oh, well, you know, and they kind of shrug their shoulders. And because you can tell there's no sense of community. There's no effort to bring everybody in the school together. And so I believe that we've got to do more to help mentor young teachers and help support teachers so that they will stay in the profession instead of saying, you know, it is just too hard a slog every year. I had one teacher say to me, I start the school year, I shut my door, and I hope I can keep everybody out of there because that's the only way I'll have a chance to be successful with my kids. That is not a good model. And let's talk about No Child Left Behind. I think we can all agree that we do need measures to determine how children are learning. We all believe in accountability, but not the kind of accountability that the No Child Left Behind law has imposed on people. You know, it's not only been funded uh, less than was promised, it's been administered with a heavy and arbitrary hand, and it hasn't been implemented appropriately throughout the country. I think it's time we had a president who cared more about learning than memorizing, more about exploring than teaching to the test. Let's create an assessment system that puts learning, not testing, front and center. You know, I think the test has become the curriculum instead of the other way around. And, you know, while our children are getting good at filling in those little bubbles, what exactly are they learning? You know, how much creativity is going untapped? How much passion for learning is being deadened? And how much of the curriculum is being cut out in order to make time to prepare for those tests? These high stakes testing systems have pushed out physical education at a time when our children are becoming more obese, pushed out art and music, which we know often keeps kids in school and gives them an outlet for what they can do and how they feel cutting back on the kinds of special opportunities that I remember from going to school. I remember field trips. I remember experiential learning. I remember doing things a little outside of the box, you know, acting out things and putting on shows and learning how to be responsible and working with other people. I hear over and over again that what used to be a well-rounded curriculum has been shrunk. And, and that, I don't think, is in the best interests of our kids, nor do I think it is in the best interests of our economic competitiveness, which is the real driving reason why people want our kids to do better. Isn't it ironic that China is now looking at how it can open up their schools to more creativity, while we are becoming more like a rote learning center instead of what American education used to be like? Don't get me wrong, I believe in assessments, but I think we need to rethink how we do assessments and be smart about what the factors are that we're trying to assess and the best ways to measure it. Secondly, we need to rethink the idea in No Child Left Behind that supplemental services are the magic bullet for helping to fix our troubled schools. Listen, we spend roughly $500 million a year, and it could go up as high as $2 billion on supplemental services. But guess what? We don't hold those supplemental service providers accountable. We don't expect them to be highly qualified. 
They aren't required to coordinate with educators to ensure they're advancing the school curricula. And we have absolutely no evidence that the supplementary services are helping children achieve at higher levels at all. I believe we ought to get back to evidence-based decision making. If something doesn't work, let's not spend money on it. Instead, let's put money into what we know does work, like smaller class sizes and higher teacher pay and better curriculum. And speaking about what doesn't work, there is the whole reading first controversy, and I'm sure you've all heard about that. Now, as many of you know, reading first was a good idea. Let's try to make sure we're using evidence-based reading programs to help as many children as possible. But the officials who've been administering that program have certainly failed us. They have pushed schools to use programs that they have a financial interest in lining their own pockets with at least one million dollars. And this is what I love about the Bush administration. They put people in charge of a program with conflicts of interest who make money off of it. Then educators blow the whistle on them. So the contractor charged with establishing and executing key aspects of the program is then hired by the Bush administration to evaluate the program that he has helped to implement. Well, you know, that's like asking President Bush what he thinks his approval rating should be. I don't think it would necessarily reflect what it is in America. He'd probably give himself 100%. Well, when I'm in the White House, we're going to end the era of cronyism and corruption that has plagued this government the last six years. And finally, we're going to focus more attention on those schools that are most in need. Today, just 12% of our high schools produce 50% of our nation's dropouts. And they're not getting the help they need to make sure that those children stay in school and do as well as they can. And we know that a lot of our elementary and middle schools are struggling as well. We need to start targeting these high-need schools. I remember in New York City, when that was actually working. There were chancellor districts, as I recall, that were focusing resources, working in conjunction with the union to put everybody's heads together to come up with the interventions that would most likely to succeed, and as I recall, it was working. We do know things that work, and we keep reinventing it all the time. And in part, I believe it's because Political winds blow. Contractors come up with new ideas and try to sell new products. It is time we said no. Let's use interventions that work. That means extended learning time. It means summer school. It means stronger parental involvement from the very beginning of a child's schooling.